Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's us awesome that you're tuning in. So in this package from China, we are going to talk about the game console played with passion. But there is another name, this thing called the Top 10 Simulator Big Screen Game Console High Quality Trustworthy. Okay, so this device is also called Q400, if I'm recalling it correctly. So, and I must say, these are the handhelds that always uh, surprise me a little bit. There are some fellow YouTubers that already did a review about it, but this thing is a little bit differently than the other version I've reviewed. But this is what we're going to get inside the box. The system itself, we're getting the famous toilet paper manual with some basic explanation about the system, what you can do with it. And here we're having the little micro USB cable. And we're going to get this very cheap yeah, USB charger. I would not recommend using this. So let's take a close look at the system because here I found something that is very interesting. But I can tell you that this device has some new features that I have never seen before or not in this way. So that is what we're going to talk about. So let's first talk about the controls and how it feels. So the design itself, I'm a big fan of the landscape edition, simply because when you're holding it, it feels quite comfortable. Personally, I really prefer to have the D-pad in this position because I'm a D-pad guy and yeah, the two joysticks, you don't use them very often for retro games. If you're holding it, it feels quite nice. You can reach the shoulder buttons very easily. The joystick feels very nice. Cut it nice click. So let's talk about this because the D-pad, I can already tell you, the D-pad surprises me big time. It feels not like a very high quality D-pad, but in general, when you're playing some games, they are very responsive and all my moves come out instantly with a fighting game. And for two dimensional games also play very nice and very responsive. Okay, so here on the right side, we're finding the second joystick, the same story like the left one, the same quality, more like the Nintendo Switch version. And when you're seeing it up close, I think you will notice it too. We're having here the four buttons, and I can tell you they feel quite nice, long travel. Here we're having select start and the volume control. I'm not a big fan, I personally prefer a little scrolling wheel, but nevertheless, we're having a volume control button, so that is very nice. Okay, the first noticeable difference with comparing different handhelds that this thing comes with four USB connections. So basically what you can do and that the idea behind it is that you can use this thing like a game system itself. At the top we're having the four shoulder buttons. That was something we were missing with many of the handhelds. We have on off switch, TF card, micro USB for charging, headphone jack, but also, and this is very interesting, we're having an HDMI out. Seeing that we're having two speakers at the back, that makes me very exciting. Simply because I'm a big fan of soundtracks and music. So I think and music is the part of the experience when you're playing a game. But if you take a close look at the 4 inch display, here we're going to get something that is the point that I'm always saying. They need to mess something up. And the reason why is not because of the non IPS display 4 inch inside. No, I'm talking about the shitload of screen tearing that I see sometimes when playing a game. And there's a little bit of a disappointment and I will show you what I mean with this. So the first thing that I did notice with this handheld and it was very surprising having the layout of the G1000, a little arcade machine I've reviewed in the past. So people have seen this video will recognize the menu. I don't like the little thumbnails we're seeing here because you cannot change them out. The system itself is running on Linux and the back end is RetroArch for all the emulators. So here we're having the option to have different folders and here you can see what kind of games the system will run. For example, we're having CPS, Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Mega Drive, PlayStation 1 and Super Famicom. We have an option to listen to music, watch a pretty picture watch some mm -hmm, naughty movies and here we have the option to browse to the files don't do that because otherwise you can mess up some, mess something up settings language here we have some different language options theme style yeah that's it and then different background i don't know if you can even add more of them and the key tune i'm going to change it out oh, i like this one all right so this is what you're going to get with the main menu but the first thing I did notice with the D-pad is that it plays very well. I have never seen such a good D-pad on a cheap device like this because this is a pretty, let's say, budget device. All the moves come out instantly and man, I'm totally in love with this D-pad. The analog stick itself, you can see that it has the same great response. So when it comes to the controls of the device, I'm just amazed by it. 
Like with the G1000 Mini Arcade Machine, we're having now the options to do a quick load, quick save. When pressing select and start in the game, you're going to get this menu. From this point, you also can leave the game to the main menu. But as you can see, we're having the option to create or choose a slot, and then we can save and load state. Something that's pretty cool. Also, we have the option to change the controls. If you have an issue with it, you can just change that and fix it yourself. But there's no way to change expect ratio. So again, we have found another flaw of this system. Okay, so let's start a little bit with... The Beefcake Fan! Okay, beat him up. If I recall it correctly, they're having games like this. The 9043 are basically um, a prize cabinet game, but nevertheless, look pretty stretched. Hmm, sound is not great. And I know for sure normally this is a game that you're going to play in a price cabinet. It looks pretty pretty strange. And you can see the screen tearing going ape shit over here in this game. But what I do know when playing the games like this, I find it not super comfortable. And that's the reason why I always want to have the D-pad in this position. So let's try in Game Boy game. So the image is very straight. Oh no no no! Okay, so the next game we're going to try is for the Game Boy Advance. The reason why I did notice quite some different problems with this emulator in combination with the display. Not only screen tearing, but I did notice that the last time I've played it some ghosting. As you can see, I don't know what's going on, but it's more like glitching. But that makes this game freaking unplayable in my opinion. Quite a shame because it sounds pretty good. So this is something that you need to know that this is a game that doesn't run on all the handhelds or the cheap handhelds I've reviewed in the past in the last couple of three years. So I just wanted to try it out to see how it's playing and how it sounds. But the D-pad itself plays very nice and also the analog stick if you want to play adventure games like this. So with these devices, we finally have the option to play some PlayStation 1. What I do like is that we're having four shuttle buttons, so we're having all the buttons that we're going to need for playing this platform.
Okay, let's let's see, let's see how it looks and how it sounds. If you want to use the HDMI output, you need to have a special cable because we're going to need the mini HDMI connection over here. It's different and it's not the normal HDMI, so keep it in mind. If you have an HDMI cable laying around, you can also buy a little converter. Leave a link in the description where you can find these. What I really like about the HDMI option is that it's plug and play. You don't need to do any configuration. You just plug in the cable and as you can see, we have an image. But what I really like about the HDMI function, by the side of the point, it works plug and play. It doesn't even matter what I boot up, everything works like a charm. And it looks pretty good, and it still has a very stable frame rate. But basically what you can do, you can use this thing like in game system. So we can you hook up a controller in the USB connection number one. Just going to use this Chinese USB PlayStation knockoff controller. While I think it's pretty cool that it works almost plug and play, it is a possibility that you need to reconfigure your controls in the menu that I've shown you before. But for player 1 I'm having the controller here and for player 2 I'm using the handheld. Of course if you want to use more controllers you can just plug them in over here. They marked the ports like USB 1, 2, 3, 4 and they are basically aligned with the player so we're having player 1, 2, 3 and 4. Nevertheless I think it's pretty cool that you can play your games like this and basically you have a handheld and you have a game system. Basically that is what we go in 2 and 1. Alright so let's talk about the Q400 and for the Final conclusion. So I really was surprised with this handheld to be honest. I did see some reviews of some fellow YouTuber thinking, ah, this isn't going to be an, another shitty handheld, but it is not at all bad. If you look at the way how it looks, how it feels and how it plays, man, I'm in love with this D-pad. It feels quite nice, super responsive. That makes me super exciting. The only letdown is this display. I would say just replace them with an IPS display with no screen tearing so we're having a very nice and good experience. Emulation is pretty decent, I really love that you can hook up a controller, even up to 4 controllers very easily so you have a, can play with an arcade party. 4 shuttle buttons so we have all the buttons we're going to need for playing PlayStation 1. So if you're looking at everything, the full complete kit, the stereo speakers, it's not bad and I must say it is one of my favorite handhelds nowadays, but I must say they need to fix the display because this is a very big bummer. Nevertheless, this is what you're going to get. So yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of this. And thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit the little bell. Come on, the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next one.